Let me make this perfectly clear from Jump Street. Even though by me calling out that I'm making this clear from Jump Street, there are going to be plenty of people that don't actually listen to what I'm going to say next and will sit there and rant and rage away. Whatever. Couldn't care less. This is not a hit piece on Ric Flair. This is not a bash piece on Ric Flair. This is not designed for me to hate on Ric Flair. Because ultimately, when you look at Ric Flair, there is no question that he is one of the biggest names, the biggest icons in the history of professional wrestling. He's a superstar, household name type of guy, wrestled all over the world, made and of course lost millions of dollars along that John Daly line of all my exes wear Rolexes. And frankly, Ric Flair has forgotten more about professional wrestling than I will ever know, or frankly, any of you watching will ever know. That said, that doesn't mean that a legend and icon like Ric Flair can't say incredibly dumb and stupid things. Both of those things can be true. He can be a legend and an icon, forgotten more about the business than we'll ever know, and still say off-the-mark stupid crap. And he just did that, and it's like mind-numbingly stupid. And I understand from Rick's standpoint, he's at a place in his life, he's not trying to burn bridges, his daughter wrestles for WWE, so he's really not trying to make life difficult for her, he's just trying to sit there and get the call for an occasional payday and have good relationships, he's great friends with God and all of that. I get it, I get it. But still, that's not an excuse to say just really bad, dumb stuff from a person that we frankly should expect to know and understand and truly get it better. Truly get it better. But again, this is a guy in Ric Flair that for so many years in shoot interviews and so forth, started talking about work rates so much to the point where the fans started to buy into that because they're like, well, Ric Flair's talking about work rate. That must be the most important thing in professional wrestling where it doesn't matter. It's a business. It's about making money. It's about who draws the most money. That's not opinion. That's fact. Your work rate doesn't matter two beans if you're wrestling in an empty arena. I'm just saying. You look at wrestling now in a lot of cases, especially for WWE, guys can do great, tremendous moves, arguably better pure move sets than at any point in time in history. Yet the interest is as low, if not lower, than it ever has been in their modern Titan Tower era. Why is that? Because guys aren't characters. They're not lives and life personalities. The storytelling stinks. The booking stinks. The talent stink in terms of actually being able to tell a story. You go on and on and on and on and on. But because guys think that equates to work rate, and Ric Flair for so many years talked about work rate, well, then obviously that's the most important thing, and that's just dumb. But anyways, here's what Ric Flair said in a recent interview when asked about WWE and their struggles to find the guy, that gold standard, that standard bearer. And I quote, I think that Roman was going to be the guy, and then of course the illness set him back. I think he still can be, but it's hard. They have some great talent, great wrestlers, but they're having some hard time, in my estimation, figuring out who the guy is. And it's not because they're not talented. I think they're just getting crossed in mixed feelings and mixed emotions from different people. Unquote. And then a little bit later, he piped in and said, you have to have been a wrestler for a long time to see this. Like, there's a lot of stupidity here to unpack. So let's start off first with this. I think that Roman was going to be the guy, and then, of course, the illness set him back. Number one, his company had been trying to make him that replacement John Cena prop for almost a half fucking decade. How much damn longer did they need, Rick? Number two. You hear how ridiculous that sounds? The illness set him back. Hell, at that point in time, the illness could have been the impetus for a great turnaround in his character and truly making him into a top baby face and truly making him the guy. It is his lack of ability to pull it off combined with the WWE's lack of creative imagination that allowed that to not happen. The illness didn't set him back, Rick. 
That's ridiculous. The illness, if anything, would have been the perfect chance to totally remake and reshape the character and do great and wonderful things with it. And of course, the WWE did what they do because hashtag WWE ruins everything. The illness set him back. The motherfucker had four plus almost five damn years. How much longer did he need for it to not work? Just saying. This whole talk about getting crossed and mixed feelings and mixed emotions from different people. Yeah, there's a lot of that. It's the 50-50 booking. It's the lack of actually having progression in their characters. Like guys will sit there and just randomly win world titles for the fuck all of it for no reason. There's no story. There's no progression in their character. No growth in the emotional investment of the audience. You do not have to have been a wrestler for a long, long time to be able to see that, Rick. But perhaps the most ridiculous thing of all, although saying that Roman was going to be the guy and then the illness sent him back was just all types of ludicrous. It's ridiculous. When Rick says you have to have been a wrestler for a long time to see this, that's just so stupid. No, the fuck you don't. Just no, you don't. Because, Rick, you were a wrestler for 40 plus fucking years and clearly you can't see What's obvious, the reason WWE doesn't have a top guy, Rick, is because the WWE doesn't want a top guy, Rick. This is Vince's MO. This is Vince's business decision. This all goes back to the days of all that investment and efforts put into Austin, and realistically, his run at the top was only a couple of years. If you think back on it, that's true. And as they were investing all of this energy, time, resources, money into Austin, making him a huge international name and a household name and a big time fucking megastar, they were doing the same thing with The Rock and the same thing happened. And they just basically built him up and gave him the platform to be able to sell himself as a movie, movie star. And now he's one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood for every movie that he does, whether it's good or not. So eventually Vince got tired of investing so much energy and resources and effort and money into guys to become big time megastars, to be in theory bigger than the brand, being the guys that you could say, hey, Austin and The Rock are coming to town, doesn't matter who else is on the card, the venue is fucking sold out to where when these guys leave, you're left high and dry with nothing else in the pike. And then once Brock Lesnar, who was that next chosen one, that next the guy, leaves to go play foosball in 2004 for the Minnesota Vikings after WrestleMania 20, there was a clear conscientious decision made by Vince to say, we're not doing business that way anymore. We're going to find guys that we can use as props that can be representative of top-level guys, but they're not really truly top-level guys. I call them the Fortunate Four with Cena, Orton, Batista, and Edge, and you think about it. That's pretty much true. You still had Triple H in the works, and you knew he wasn't fucking going anywhere because he was, after all, married to Stephanie. Shawn Michaels wasn't going anywhere because nobody was going to give him the leeway or the money that Vince did, and he was great buds with Triple H, so he ain't fucking going anywhere. But you weren't going to try and make any of them big-time megastars and truly make them the unquestioned guy because that way... When somebody left, in theory, you wouldn't be that much worse off. Now, eventually, the WWE tried to throw all of their eggs into the Cena basket, but Cena wasn't really made into the top guy. He was the top prop. And believe me, there is a difference, Rick. And again, you don't have to have been a wrestler for a long time to see this. The WWE isn't in the business of making stars anymore because they don't want to make stars anymore because they don't want to elevate people on platforms like theirs, to then go somewhere else and become bigger stars and make even more money and for Vince and the WWE to not get the kickback and the benefit from that. Surely some of that comes from Vince has lost his touch. The Titan Tower Machine is not the same, and they can't make stars even if they wanted to. That is absolutely true. But that is also kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy in a way. If you don't want to make them, eventually you're going to forget how to make them. And again, you don't have to have been a wrestler for a long time to see this. Saying Roman was going to be the guy and then, of course, the illness set him back is just dumb. It's not based on anything historical or factual whatsoever. And again, the illness, getting leukemia, coming back, and then kicking his ass and putting it into remission again, should have been the impetus to make the guy the fucking top baby face. 
And they didn't do it. They didn't do it. And talk about all the mixed feelings and missed emotions from different people. Well, it gets to a point where you can say the internet has helped contribute to that. People like Meltzer have fucking helped contribute to that. And that is certainly true. People like me have helped contribute to that. But it also comes down to the WWE and Vince specifically just want to do things the way they fucking want to do, regardless of the crowd reacts or not. So they create and harbor and fester this natural cesspool of an environment where there's all types of anarchy and chaos and nothing works the way it's supposed to. The heroes are the villains and the villains are the heroes. The villains have to overcome the obstacles, not the heroes. The heroes are the obstacles. It's called John Cena. His whole booking philosophy was Cena for a decade. Cena was a fucking obstacle. That's why if you weren't a kid, some chick that fantasized about his three-inch Jort Johnson or some lame-ass dude, you didn't like Cena. Did you realize how ridiculous it was? The WWE doesn't have a top guy right because they don't want one. It was a conscientious decision made a decade and a half ago. And in part, it has helped lead to the damn state of affairs that we have in WWE. It sounds like to me as much as anything, you were trying to blame differing factors and ultimately blaming the fans instead of putting the blame exactly where the hell it should be. And I understand why you didn't because of your daughter and those considerations. But just because you don't want to say and just because you're Ric Flair and just because you're an all-time great and a legend doesn't mean you're right all the time. And this is one of these cases where, in my humble opinion, you were just ass wrong. And, and that's why you need me, guys. Because I'm not kissing anybody's ass. I don't need to or want to interview Ric Flair. I don't care. I'm not going to suck up to these guys. I'm going to tell you the truth the way I see it, no matter what, whether you fucking like it or not, doesn't matter to me. And that's why OTRS Central is not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need.